a warm uh, a warm welcome to everybody at the third annual scientific conference of the ophthalmological society of kenya 2020 and uh, uh, i i thank all the organizers for giving me the opportunity to be presenting here and uh, my topic for the day is uh, challenges during femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery with posterior chamber phacic intraocular lens and my name is dr prashant girish and i'm from india Femtosecond laser uh, platforms utilize imaging and software technologies in order to create a three-dimensional reconstruction of the cornea and the crystalline lens, improve safety and efficacy of phacal multiplication, and useful in challenging scenarios as published in the JCRS in 2013. A little bit of introduction before I go to the case report on the laser emits optical pulses and duration in about domain femtoseconds. The, it also uses a wavelength of uh, 1053 uh, the neonidinium is to glass and the focus light at pot size of 3 microns as you see you can see in the image here there is an application with ultrasound pulse laser for the femtosecond laser and there is no recast layer no debris and there is no shock waves and also gives a very good tissue adherence what is the mechanism of action of femtosecond laser you have it is by the basis of the principle of photo disruption the laser energy is absorbed by the tissue which results in the plasma formation as you can see in the a diagram here and then the expansion of the plasma creates cavitation bubbles which separates the plane as you can see in the image c how the separation takes place by the small cavitation bubbles emitted by the femtosecond laser Commercially available are the femtosecond laser platforms. We have the OptiMedica, the Catalyst. We have the Technolens, the Lens AR, and the Alcon Lens Laboratories LensX. So each of these machines have various, uh, a little bit of differentiations. You know, depending upon the docking, uh, some uses a soft contact lens, some uses a non-contact immersion. method of docking so there are small variations in each of these devices but the principles of mostly all these devices is in construction of the owned capsular rexes arcuate incisions for correcting the astigmatism and nucleus fragmentation coming to our case report a 32 year old male patient came with progressive decrease in vision in the right eye for 2 years The patient was a known case of a high myopic and had a history of implantation of the posterior chamber phacic intraocular lens in both eyes. Uh, the lens, the ICL used was the Vision ICL, the Star Surgical Company USA, around four years back. During examination of the right eye, the visual acuity was around six by eighteen, had a clear cornea. The anterior chamber was very evident of the ICL in situ. the pupil was round and a peripheral iridotomy was there and the lens had nucleus sclerosus grade 2 fundus a hazy media with a myopic fundus the left eye had good vision of 66 clear cornea icl lens set to peripheral iridotomy and a fundus showing a myopic fundus and a clear lens the image shows you sorry the image shows you the slit image of the icl and the right i we have advised a femtosecond laser assisted cataract surgery with phaco foldable iol under topical anesthesia the biometry of both eyes was taken and the axial length on the right eye was 31.24 and left eye was 28.3 the anterior chamber had good depth of 2.64 and 2.69 a lens thickness of 4.74 was seen in the right eye and left eye was 4.54 K1 K2 readings 42 and 43 diopters and the astigmatism of plus 1.04 diopters at 4 degrees against rule astigmatism was noted in the right eye and left eye had a 1 plus 118 diopters the SRK T IOL formula was used and the IOL power was around plus 0 diopters the patient was taken to the femtosecond laser docking and uh, using the lens 6 uh, alcon machine the soft fit contact lens was used and Initially, during the docking, we noticed a defocus of the anterior surface of the ICL. As you can see in the image here, uh, the orange arrow indicating the placement of the laser, which has defocused. 
around the icl and this thin line here as you can see the hypoglossal area is the icl and similarly in the lower picture you can see the lens fragmentation defocused with a shifting superiorly as you can see this is the lens oct as it has been shifted towards the anterior lens capsule so this was the first encountered problem we faced the defocusing because of the higher refractive uh, index of the icl secondly there was a manual reduction we had to bring down the uh, marking to the level of the capsule and uh, this is the icl as you can see here and we also uh, reduced the delta to around 250 microns compared to the default of 300 microns uh, and we put a 4.9 mm size of capsule of excess and this is the second image where you can see the lens centration was done and brought down to a normal position we also made sure we created around 800 to 2000 microns away from the anterior and the posterior capsule this was the 2.8 mm planar uh, primary corneal uh, incision which is made and uh, the lens chopping pattern was around 5.1 mm of diameter fragmentation of two chops and a two cylinder pattern was seen in the central area the femtosecond laser was initiated and you can see the intralenticular bubbles which have been coming out and uh, you can see there was an entrapment of the air bubbles between the icl and the anterior lens capsule so this was a very interesting feature which was noted in this and this was how the patient was taken to the intraoperative procedure and you can see the capsular rexus flap which is a uh, free floating with careful entry of the anterior chamber with the spatula and then with the forceps uh, mcforsens and a side port we carefully lifted the icl and it was folded and removed and you can see the icl here which is uh, uh, removed and this margin also had a little bit of markings of the laser you should also notice that the nucleus in the picture didn't have any nucleus fragmentation by the laser so we continued to do a fake direct chop technique and the lens was well placed in the bag we use a three piece hydrophobic foldable iol with the sensor ar foam and this was the pod1 well centered good capsular rexus uh, no uncuts or tears uh, there was a similar uh, case performed by in the discussion by anismo et al which was published in the digit journal of ophthalmology in 2017 uh, and with boris malungen that there were bubbles entrapment seen uh and there was incomplete capsulotomy but it did not interfere with the nucleus fragmentation but an interesting feature is that they also had it was performed in a vitreotomized eye so they had silicon air bubbles floating in the anterior chamber probably could be the cause of uh, uncut capsulotomy flags difficult to perform nucleus fragmentation uh, there is an accumulation of gas bubbles capsulotomy free floating was seen the errors are likely likely who to be focused on the refractive index of the optical material and modifications altering the capsulotomy tissue height and increasing the vertical spot spacing could help uh, to reduce the bubble formation safety margins were 1000 microns which we had kept separating the posterior and uh, anterior capsule uh, uh, default of the regular ones would be around 600 to 800 microns the concerns for imaging Uh, acquisition and laser delivery uh, should be studied in the future in order to optimally modify the flag settings if necessary as uh, told by William W American uh, Academy of the Journal of Ophthalmology was published and the conclusion why is the case situation being presented i mean we wanted to highlight about the bubble entrapment seen under the icl lead to difficulties in the completion of the nucleus assembly and what is the learning point careful parameter settings in docking of the femtosecond laser and possibility of the need of regular ultrasound assisted the nuclear disassembly and last but never the least to conclude i would like to say patients must be informed about the possibility and the need for regular ultrasound nuclear disassembly thank you